So you know, uh, recently we heard some talk about those uh, upcoming 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers. So you know, that got me thinking, is this speed too fast? You know, because uh, everything has a cost and to build these super fast chargers, you have to pay more. Um, so is it worth the extra speed? You know, is this going to be like yet another like megapixel race? Uh, like how fast speed do we actually need and how much capacity do we need? So uh, I will try to answer some of your questions based on my experience. So you know, uh, as of today, no cars will support that speed yet, but there is only one car plan in the future to support it, and that is the, the Porsche Mission E. Um, most other cars today uh, or in the near future will support 100 to 150 kilowatt. Uh, so um, Porsche, they, uh, Porsche, they claim uh, that you can charge from 0 to 80% in 15 minutes. That is pretty, pretty impressive. And uh, given that the car has 500 kilometers of range, I assume some 90 kilowatt hour pack. So that actually means that uh, if the car is charging at 350 kilowatt, it will be around 4C charging rate. And if you compare it with other cars, nowadays uh, they charge at about 1 to 2C. Uh, the only exception is Ionic, which charges a little over 3C. But what about the, the Tesla supercharger? Because you know, in, at the 2018 Q1 conference call, Elon said that future superchargers might output about 200 to 250 kilowatt. Um, and I think by that time, we can assume that uh, uh, the, the the battery packs might be at 150 to 200 kilowatt hours. So that means that uh, the the cars will be charging at around 1 to 1.7 C, which is not, not, not too crazy, you know, compared to 4 C or 3 C. I think Elon also said that, you know, if you charge it too fast, you will you will fry the battery. Yeah. But uh, before we continue, I'm going to show you uh, an actual trip we had uh, this was with a Model S85, the classic one, uh, and in this day we traveled from Oslo to Hamburg and we had a puppy with us. So it was me, wifey and a puppy. Alright, so this is Google Timeline. Now I should have used uh, Cam Studio, but uh, when I tried Cam Studio, uh, it didn't work well, it crashed or whatever, so yes, we, we filmed the screen instead, let's do it easy. So you see, uh, we started uh, in the morning. Uh, from home and then at uh, around noon we arrived in Udevalla and then for some reason we stayed there for uh, 45 minutes I think we had food and we walked the doggy uh, so it took a very long time but because we charged so so long uh, I could skip the next supercharger uh, Falkenberg and go straight to Melbistron and then there for some reason we also stayed kind of long let me see Melby Center and uh, the road 37 minutes at Melby Center. That that's also considered kind of long. I think we had a snack, and there was oh I remember there was some queue at uh, McDonald's. Lots of people there. So um, and then because we had a long stop, we could skip the next one uh, at Lodi Shopping and go straight for Kurge. And uh, let me see Kurge. Okay, but you see at Kurge we only stayed there for 18 minutes. I think we went to the restroom, stop, and then stretch our legs. Maybe, uh, yeah, I, th I remember I walked the doggy, a quick one, and then off we go again. And we skipped uh, Schlagelse, which was too close. So you went for, um, what is this? Uh, Middelfart, yeah, the Middelfart. Oh, how would you forget that? But again, at Middelfart, it was getting late in the afternoon, I mean evening. So I remember around, around here, it was noon, and then here was around four-ish. And by the time we reached uh, Middelfart, it was eight. So we needed another food break. So that stop was um, half an hour, and then the car was able to juice up enough. So I skipped uh, Rödekro and went straight for Busdorf with fairly okay uh, average speed. Yeah, this stretch is always kind of fast, less traffic and higher speed limits. And then at Busdorf, you see, we only stopped for 11 minutes. I didn't need to go to, I mean, I, I, I went for, for the restroom, but that was pretty much it. Uh, no food, whatever. Um, and then the next leg was kind of slow. Now uh, uh, the last one here, uh, towards Hamburg, you see, spent almost two hours driving, 140 kilometers. Uh, we have road constructions and stuff going slow here, even in the evening. And then the last one is a bit special. We spent 25 minutes there at uh, McDonald's, um, 
because I need to juice up for the night. I didn't have charging at the hotel. If I had charging at the hotel, then that would be great. I'm gonna just go and plug in. But you see that throughout the whole day, um, we had a long stop there, and then a long stop there, and then a short stop, and then a long stop again, and then a short stop, and then a longer stop there. So this is uh, typical, like, yeah, this is this is what you can expect if you drive a Tesla on a really long trip in one day. Okay, so that was uh, our trip. Um, but if you go back to the the Porsche Mission E, right, with 350 kilowatt uh, fast charging capability, uh, if there is a case where you arrive with 30 percent and you have to charge to 80 percent because that's fastest, then it will take less than 10 minutes. And you know, this is uh, you shouldn't block the stall after you finish charging because there will be other people who need to charge there. So that, that charging stall is like a very valuable resource. So during 10 minutes, uh, you, you will have enough time to go to the restroom and then off you go again, which is great. But if it's a case where, you know, if you remember the, the case I showed you when the trip to Hamburg, if it was like uh, Röde Kru and, um, what was it again? And, uh, uh, and Köge, yeah. Röde Kru and Köge, short stop, off we go again, that's fine. But if it was like, you know, the stops where you had, when we needed to eat, then um, you probably need longer, you probably need like half an hour to 45 minutes, worst case. Uh, and that means that uh, the car will be sitting still blocking the charger uh, for t over 20 minutes and you probably have to pay a hefty price also for, you know, being connected to the charger. So um, now what you should do then in that case is you should use up, I guess, enough and then move the car. Uh, just But then you see, you juice up, move the car, and then you start eating or whatever, you know, and then the car just sits still for uh, for 20 minutes, half an hour doing nothing. So uh, what's the point of that, right? So uh, I, w I would say that, you know, faster charging speed is very useful in certain situations, but not always. Uh, and I think that the charging speed and the capacity in the car and the you know, battery capacity should match is if you have like a mismatch, then uh, it would be a little bit troublesome. So uh, one perfect example of that is the old ENV 200 with only 24 kilowatt hour battery. It's uh, for you guys who don't know what it is. It's Nissan's van, electric, fully electric van, a pretty nice car for for its use, but they put way too small battery in it. 24 kilowatt hours. Uh, you usually drive like. Uh, 50 to 70 kilometers and then you, you should juice up but then because the battery is so small uh, it's best to only juice up about 15 minutes and then off you go again so it becomes very stressful you know the, the solution to that problem with the super fast charging is that um, okay I didn't mention another thing what you could do is you could I mean, if there was like a site there are some sites where you can slow charge uh, but you can also fast charge. I know one place uh, in, in Tesla's world, right? Tarnum, yeah, in Sweden, there are some destination chargers, which is free, uh, and also superchargers. So what you could do is you can choose between the destination charger, but you know the gap between the destination charger speed and the supercharger speed is so huge. Either you spend 30 minutes there, supercharging, or you spend three, four hours slow charging. Um, there would be it would be better if you have like more more charging uh, to choose between, but the, the the Porsche Mission E driver, what they could do is slow charge a little bit in the beginning while you eat and whatever, right? If you have a long stop, and then uh, towards the end, if you see that Scheiße, I don't have enough juice, okay, then they can fast charge. But the problem with that uh, approach is that you slow charge in the beginning until the battery might be like half full or semi, I mean, not slow charge, maybe like semi fast charge, you know. Uh, but w if you want to leave and maybe you have 70% and then you will use the super fast charger, then you don't get the super charge, uh, super fast speed again because you are higher in the end. So you should do the super, super duper charging in the lower end, but then you don't know for sure how to Estimate and you know this becomes very troublesome. You know, not everyone is an Asian with super math skills. So, um, 
it's it's going to be cumbersome. Um, ideally, what you should we should have is some kind of like um, uh, like like Tesla. You know, at least for Tesla, you have two and two stalls. They share one charger, and one car in the beginning, one car will get good speed, and then when the first car starts throttling, then the second car connected to the same charger will get more of that. So. It would be great if at least two and two were was sharing that 350 kilowatt or something. I don't know. Uh, or even better if, let's say, if they can split it between, let's say, four cars. But either way, you will be blocking, um, I would say, like a, like a, a high-valued stall. Uh, so the best would be to unplug when you are done. See, this is why I think the, the, the 200 kilowatt or 250 that um, Tesla claims will make sense because um, like I've shown you in the, in the timeline you know uh, if you drive far normally you would start with an, a full battery and then by the time you have driven a while then you want to have a stop and in that case it was with a, only an 85 kilowatt hour pack so in the future you now you can expect twice that capacity so that means that we have to drive like four, five, six hours before we have to take a break. And then once we take that break, you probably want to eat and go to the restroom. So that break will be pretty long. And that means that during those 45 minutes or 20, uh, 20 to 45 minutes, you know, you, the car will juice up quite a lot. And that means that the next stop after that long break doesn't have to be that long. So it makes sense to have a big buffer. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, because with a big buffer, you charge more than you need. And then the next stop can be shorter. Uh, but uh, in the case of, um, of the, the Mission E, the battery is not too large. And I, like I mentioned, the 4C charging rate. Like uh, you charge way faster and the battery is not too large. So uh, it will be in like, in a way, you, kinda, you can almost compare that to, um, to the ENV200. So, um, but you know, there are cases where faster charging is useful. And <laughs> you know me, if you pull a trailer, if you pull a boat or a caravan, then you have way higher consumption. That makes sense to f charge faster uh, because then you just want to stop, juice up and then keep going again. Uh, or I guess uh, almost like corner case, if you drive very fast on the German Autobahn, then you will also burn through a lot of juice uh, and in a short time you need to fill up again, but Like that is only Germany and yeah, I don't know where other places in the world where you can drive that fast uh, But again, you know uh, the battery pack should be bigger uh, in the end You know, I think the battery the, the battery size should go hand in hand with charging speed um, And you know in the end I'm gonna talk about okay. How much is enough do you think? um you know, if you look at fossil cars, they have about 600 to 1,000 kilometers of range. Uh, most like regular cars, I'm not counting trucks or semis or whatever, you know, they have like, a fairly large-ish um, fuel tank and, you know, they don't make the fuel tank like 200 liters for, for a sedan or whatever. So, um, um, I think in the future, you know, uh, if, you, if we assume that um, the cars will consume about 200 watt of a kilometer. Now, some cars will consume less and some cars will consume more. Um, based on the 200, kilo, uh, 200 watt per kilometer, I think 150 to 200 kilowatt hour is enough. So uh, maybe in the future, let's say in within five, 10 years, uh, the low range, I mean, the, like the lower end uh, will be 150 kilowatt hour. And then the higher end will be 200 kilowatt hours. And I think, Eventually, you know, if they can make the the energy density higher, then they won't just go crazy and make like uh, one thousand kilowatt hour. It, it just makes sense that you can drive, you know, forever without uh, juicing up. So uh, they will instead reduce the size and weight of the battery. So that that is always a good thing. Um, also, as for charging speed, so I was thinking, okay, so Elon he suggested two hundred to two hundred fifty kilowatt. You know, I think that makes sense because. If you go higher, you need more complex charger. You need like oh, freaking fossils. Um, but um, that could, would be cool if it was electric, by the way, motorcycle. But um, you know, in order to charge that fast, 
you have to have liquid cool cables or whatever more complexity more cost uh, for for that super super duper charger so are you done yet shit um, so I think that's I mean that should be fast enough because uh, if you charge at 200 250 kilowatt uh, in a 15 minute stop you will get about 300 kilometers of range and 300 kilometers of range will will take usually you know uh, three well, let's say two to four hours to spend anyway and within those two to four hours you might want to stretch your legs anyway uh, I mean the last solution I guess is to introduce battery swap well we already seen that in Tesla but I think you know the battery swap was a cool idea from Tesla but not many people needed that seems like uh, it might have been because of some cost because supercharger were free and then the battery swap was too cumbersome and I think you know the, the problem with battery swap is that uh, you kind of feel like you own I mean the, the battery is part of your car you know most people they care about the battery they try to not charge it too much then you know they take care of the battery and it's not like I mean you don't want to swap that battery for another someone else's battery uh, that you don't know how it's been abused or whatever and uh, you you want to get the battery back at least for Tesla's uh, program you actually had to you can swap right and then go on your trip but you have to go come back for your own battery so the battery is not just like a like a you know those gas tanks you use for electric and uh, for 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 grill or whatever you know, the barbecue or, or gas tank you use whatever that, that is just you know just a container but most people they don't look at the battery as just an energy container so they care about that thing you know so i think and also by by allowing the car to swap battery, it's they have to make some compromise uh, in the construction and whatever. So I think in the future, you know, the charging speed, the fast charging speed will be good enough and the capacity will be good enough so that you don't need to swap the battery. Yeah, so I think uh, that's it for now. Uh, I hope this was interesting for you. Uh, if it was useful, I don't know, maybe it was useful in your quest of uh, determining you know what car to get and I think in the end the bottom line is don't look blindly at the like the maximum charging speed uh, I think even for most people you know uh, e-tron can support 150 kilowatt fast charging I think that would be enough for long trips you wouldn't miss having like oh shit I need 350 kilowatt you know yeah so uh, that's it for now then so uh, talk to you guys later